So Hare Krishna, I hope you can hear me well. Okay, thank you. So we'll start our session by paying our obeisances to His Divine Grace, Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, the founder Acharya Pur. So we are in our journey for chapter 18. And today we have, sorry. Yeah. So today we will be uh, trying to cover, so basically chapter 18 has 78 verses. Um, and this, the title of this chapter is, it's the conclusion chapter, like you can say the perfection of renunciation. Um, now, in chapter 18, we have 78 verses. It is in, indeed the biggest chapter in Bhagavad Gita, you know. And, um, but this is kind of a summary chapter, you know. We'll see that uh, Krishna very beautifully since, uh, you know, if you remember, we had chapter 2, right, where, uh, which was like uh, contents of Gita summarized. That was the title of it. Now, we got a very nice glimpse from Krishna giving us a nice glimpse about what is karma yoga, bhakti yoga, gyan, you know, gyan yoga, ashtang yoga. So we got, you know, a good insight about the whole, you know, kind of, um, you know, in just Gita, right? And that's why the title of the chapter was the contents of Gita summaries. Now, this chapter, like we can see, it's the conclusion, right? So it is the... It's a nice summary of all the chapters, all the key concepts we have learned so far in Gita. Sorry. And Krishna has beautifully summarized this. So uh, we have for our convenience of understanding, we have divided this chapter into five sections. Today we will be covering the first two topics, which is from Shloka 1 to 40. Um, and from it starts with uh, you know Shloka 1, um, freedom from bondage through karma yoga. So we touch base karma yoga because karma yoga, like you know, we learned in chapter three and five before. Yeah. So we'll touch base the key concepts, that the five factors of action. If you remember, we learned in third and fifth chapter again, we touch base on the uh, areas where uh, there are three doers. You know, we having the mentality that we are just the only doer is not the right mentality. There are three doers, you know, and we learned that triangle cycle, right? Where the jiva, only thing the jiva does is, can somebody tell me? Desire. Desire, right? Desires. Thank you. Baby. So the only thing the jiva does is desire. And then the supreme, based on what we deserve, you know, uh, and what we desire, the, uh, the supreme grants, right? Sanctions. And then that is, executed by the material nature. Okay. Now, uh, we, we touch base a bit more detail on that, where we, you can see five factors of action here, and we'll go through that, what it is exactly. And then from Shloka 18 to 40, you will see, again, you know, uh, Krishna highlighting that it's actually the modes. The modes control all the activities, you know. Um, in, in the 17th chapter, in prior chapter, we learn how modes control, you know, how in three modes, even activities like sacrifice, charity, we learned food, right? Uh, we also learned austerity, right? How these are, can also be done, done in three modes, you know, how modes influence even these activities. Similarly, now in this chapter, we'll learn further factors, you know, that mode controls not only those, but even other things like knowledge, our work, all of this, yeah. So we'll learn that. So that's where we will try to conclude today. And then after this, Krishna, you know, uh, he explains from Shloka 41 to 48 how performing Varnashrama, you know, performing our prescribed Varnashrama duty, you know, we can get purification. You know, that's the key. Yeah. Uh, and then by that purification, we have then attained the Brahman platform, which we have learned before again. You know, perform sacrifice, right? That's what Krishna said, perform sacrifice for Vishnu. Um, and then you get purified. And then from 56 to 66, yes, it's the uh, very nectarian verses there. Um, it's uh, pure bhakti verses um, and how we need to act on Krishna consciousness. And then in the end, the conclusion. Now, conclusion, again, we'll see how 
Arjuna concludes his understanding. Krishna concludes, you know, I, I mean, with his uh, instructions. And then how Sanjaya concludes, you know, what is his version? So different. Right? So we'll start today then with our first section, which is the uh, verse 1 to 70. Um, and this covers freedom from bondage. That's the title, right? Um, now, moving further, uh, so the first slide. So just a general question, you know, what is generally our approach towards our problems we have in life? You know, um, how do we solve our problems? To our intelligence, right? Now, when we are saying through our intelligence, we solve our problems, do you think even the intelligence is also influenced by the three modes of nature? What are the thoughts? See, we have to remember, we had the subtle body covering and the gross body. So what were the covering of the subtle body? Subtle body is your uh, mind uh, intelligence, right? Yes, like mind, ego. intelligence, and false ego. Correct. Exactly. Thank you. So, when we are saying that it is subtle body, so it is also made up of matter, right? Mm -hmm. And anything which is matter is controlled by three modes, right? So, yes, our intelligence is also influenced by three modes. And we'll study this later today. Okay? So, what is the solution? We know. Surrender. And we have learned this in the past chapters. Right? Surrender for Krishna. Now, we learned in the initial chapters, right, that... Um, Can I ask a question here? Can we just go back to previous slide? Because when you are saying surrender... It's in the material world also, when we say surrender, it is to uh, only to Krishna or the, the like, uh, if, if you are facing any situation, any issues in the life, right? Mm -hmm. Is it the, um, like, for example, workplace problem or any, any other issues? So even there also, you mean to say how to, find out the sol like how to resolve those issues is it to surrendering to krishna when so, yes. so how do you correlate uh, with respect to uh, yeah so we are coming back here actually to the initial concept which we learn uh, in the bhakti yoga section right so um, that yes surrender is sharanagati that's what we call it surrender to krishna yes but when we are talking later in this chapter itself, we learn that, you know, um, being in our Varnashrama, in whichever ashrama we are, you know, we have to perform our activities, keeping Krishna in center. Say, for example, uh, we also learned this example that a Krishna, see, two people yeah, uh, in a corporate life, say, for example, one person uh, is uh, say, you know, uh, externally, you are seeing that both of them are doing same job, right? But internally, their conscious might be different. For example, a person working for, um, you know, for in his job, the whole, uh, it's more on materialistic, you know, approach, like sense gratification. If I do this, I can buy something not the necessity, but luxury. We are talking here about luxury. Before. So, and the other person who is in Krishna consciousness is performing the prescribed duty of maintaining the family, doing the job, but with a mindset that, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm taking care of Krishna's, you know, uh, my wife who is given by, to me by Krishna, my children who are given to me by Krishna, right? And keeping that Krishna consciousness mind, Con consciousness itself, you know, and the desire is not heavy. It's more of let me, you know, earn and also, you know, use it for Krishna consciousness, you know, for activities around Krishna consciousness. So surrender is keeping 
Krishnai Center, we also gave several examples. I think Kiso Prabhuji, you were not around that time, right? So we gave several examples around, say, a person you will see, you will you might find in your uh, in life that many people um, dedicating around in a day, two, three hours on newspaper. You know, yes, we are not saying that's not needed. It is needed, but we need to, you know, aware as a devotee will know, you know, what's happening. Yes, they will spend the time, but, you know, they will utilize the time, you know, um, channelizing that into Krishna conscious activities. You know? Not completely focusing on something materialistic heavily. It is like, yes, you have to have the knowledge of what's happening around, but those couple of hours can be used rather for chanting in the morning. Right? So it is like surrendering this. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. because we learned that Maya Dakshina Prakriti, right? It's a seven chapter, nine chapter. These modes are actually under only thing. You know, the, the boss for these modes is Krishna. So if we are serving the supreme boss, modes will work, you know, they, they will not influence the victims, you know. They will make way for us to progress in our spiritual life. It's, it's that. And it was beautifully, you know, ex um, explained in an example, uh, which comes to my mind right now is, uh, say, uh, a person approaches a house yeah, of someone and there's a dog in that house. You know. This dog is, you know, of course, you know, um, is, is kept to take care of the house, right? Uh, to to not uh, to ensure that no you know irrelevant persons don't entry. Right? Now this person goes at the gate, and the dog starts barking very badly, looking at the person. Yeah? And have you seen cases where the dog barks and then the owner comes out? You know why is he barking? And the owner then looks at the person at the gate and tells the dog, no, you know this I know this person, let him in. Right? So that we have seen this. So similarly, you know, the dog here is actually the material nature. And the person at the gate is us. You know, and Krishna is the owner. So if, you know, Krishna, yeah, if we perform our devotional activities, then the material nature has to work according to the owner. You know? Krishna will let, because it's responsibility, we have to understand it's the responsibility of material nature to make sure that right people come in. Right people go to spiritual work, go to Krishna. Right? So the, the material nature is just performing its duty. Right? But it can be overcome by us knowing Krishna. Only when we know Krishna. Right? So that, that's the yeah, I hope that answers and that helps. Yes, thank you. Okay. So um, we'll move further now. Yeah, freedom from bondage. So karma yoga is the initial few shlokas. I think Shloka 1 to 12, we talk about Karma Yoga in chapter 8. And this was actually the first concept we learned in Gita in chapter 3, you know, starting from chapter 3. So I'll just go through this. So gist of this section, you know, performing prescribed actions in the mood of renunciation is better than renouncing the action itself. Now we studied in chapter 3 and 5 that we should, our focus should rather be on karma phala sannyas, if you remember these terms. There were two terms we learned, karma sannyas and karma phala sannyas. Karma sannyas is, you know, renouncing, uh, renunciating the work itself, the prescribed duties, karma. Right? Now, karma phala sannyas is renouncing the karma phala. So, do, uh, you know, renouncing the fruits, phala of the work okay so we learned in chapter 3 and 5 about karma yoga that we should rather focus on karma phala sanyas not karma sanyas and dedicate the karma phala to krishna that's what we learned right now similarly we are going to see here you know so we shouldn't we have to be very clear that we shouldn't be renouncing actions you know work itself you know but the attachment to that fruits of work. That's what we should work on renunciate. Yeah. So Krishna is again explaining this in this chapter, actually. Yeah. Uh, so 
Yeah, so we will um, just going through the, uh, after going through this last part comprising of six chapters of Gita about Jnana Yoga, we understand that the three modes of nature have strong influence in everything. Right? With this knowledge, Arjuna now starts thinking as whether his decision of taking renunciation in the beginning was also influenced by the three modes of nature. And was he acting in mode of ignorance? Hence, he started inquiring about this with Krishna. Now, Krishna, whole Gita started with Arjuna wanted to renunciate. Right? He wanted to run away. And Krishna said that don't be a coward. Right? He was very tired, Arjuna. And now Arjuna is thinking after understanding the whole of Gita, he's thinking with his decision or his thought process of you know, uh, leaving the battle and going away. You know, is that the right, right way of taking renunciation? Or was he influenced? He was in ignorance. That's what he's asking himself. Now that's again, we start this chapter with question from Arjuna asking about renunciation because he was thinking the whole thing started with his thought of renunciation. Okay. Now, first shloka, Arjuna's inquiry on sannyasa and tap. Now, these are two terms. Yeah. We have to be very careful here so that we understand it clearly. Yeah. So, sannyasa is order of life. Right. It's an ashram. Right. Whereas, tyaga is you know, we, um, we will come or maybe uh, let me read this. So, Tyaga is again, the renunciation. It's not the order of life. Okay. It's renunciation. Okay. So, now let's see the first look. Arjuna Vacha. Sanyasasya Mahabhau Tattvam Ichami Vedutam Tyagasya Cha Rishikesha Pratakesha Keshi Nishudana Right. So, here Arjuna is saying, O mighty armed one, I wish to understand the purpose of renunciation, Tyaga, and of the renounced order of life, Sanyasa, O killer of KC women, master of sins. See, uh, because Arjuna was thinking of renunciating before, when he was, he, he started on the battle. So now, he actually wants to go deeper to understand. You know, he wants to know what exactly is the purpose of sannyas. You know, and what is the difference between renunciation, which is renunciating, right, which is tyaga, and order of renunciation, which is sannyasa. Okay, so we will will go through this because Krishna answers it very uh, you know in the next shloka, and that will give us a clear understanding as what are these. So, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kamya Nam Karma Nam Nyasam Sanyasam Tava Yoviduhu Sarva Karma Falatyagam Prahustyagam Vichakshanaha. Supreme Personality of God itself, the giving up of activities that are based on material desire is what great learned men call the renounced order of life. And giving up the results of all activity is what wise call renunciation, which is Tyaga. So, giving up all material activities are for, are, you know, it's sannyasa. Whereas, tyaga is giving up the results of activities. Yeah. Now, again, we will uh, go in next slide, which will make it further clear. So, let me bring all of them up. So, now what Krishna is saying is there are two types of activities. Nitya karma and kamya karma. Okay. Nitya karma is what is the daily obligatory prescribed activities which we do, like getting up in the morning, you know, offering obeisances, sleeping on time, eating on time, you know, all of that nitya karma. Yeah. Okay. So they are obligatory duties. And then kamya karma. Yeah. Kamya karma is what activities which are done for with a personal desire, to fulfill a personal desire. Okay. Now for sannyasa, which is the order of life, which you can, you know, people take up, right? Sannyasa is the order of life. Now sannyasa, in sannyasa, they are doing their nitya karma, but they're giving up the kamya karma. 
okay so doing the obligatory prescribed duties but giving up the material activities okay it is karma action now what is tyaga see in tyaga they do both nitya karma and kamya karma okay but they give up the results the fruits of the work okay so tyaga or renunciation means we have to get detached with the fruits okay not the work itself yes we may have that kind of um, desire that okay let me do this with a personal desire but you know if we give up the fruits and surrender it to krishna that is also renunciation that is renunciation but it's not order of renunciation order of renunciation is sanyasa taking up them where they give up you know all the karma karma kamya karmas material activities okay so with the, um, you know so tyaga is you get engaged in both you do your prescribed you know uh, spiritual activities also and you are involved in material activities it is you know that you are trying to renounce with the roots of action that's what is you know tyaga okay so with that i'll just move forward now next shloka what krishna says is see how krishna always refers right we have seen before also he mentioned specific you know scriptures and sages before also that you know they say this it's always the basis is scriptures right now again krishna mentions in next shlokas that what learned people say he himself is supreme but still he is giving a reference right that's the you know um, i think sweetness of krishna right so so he says that there are two opinions which learned people give yeah one is give up or you know what is tyaga i mean this is the two opinions about tyaga sanyasa it's clear right it's order of life and you don't do materialistic activities focuses only nitya karma right now about tyaga there are two opinions that's what question says and these are the third and fourth verses yeah so the two opinions the first opinion is that some people say that give up all material activities you know as they are faulty you know because there is a possibility of violence in the act of sex so first class of people they say that give up all material activities why because anything related to material activities is temporary it's faulty yeah and the second class of people the second opinion is that they say that no no never give up you know uh, at least these three activities which is sacrifice charity and austerity you know because why don't give up these three because if you give that up then you will incur sin you know it is as per vedas okay and and see here and in next verse krishna will say what is his verdict you know that is also he clearly gives but here you can see that um uh, performing violence see um no if i read the second opinion never give up the acts of sacrifice which is yajna charity dana and austerity tapa because one incurs no sin from performing what is prescribed in vedas even if it involves violence yes vedas do you know prescribe uh, violence you know violence what perform violence as it is in vedas means we need to understand clearly what is it you know for you know for example animal killing animal killing is okay actually for vedas it's allowed but we need to understand clearly that why it was you know in prior yugas uh, it was done for actually not for the sense gratification of the person so that they can eat it no it was done for the benefit of animals you know scriptures allows animal killing because prior yugas brahmana had the power to revive the animals you know they sacrifice the animal and they can revive the animal in a new healthy body you know or they had the power to elevate the animal into a higher species like human yeah nowadays we don't have eligible brahmanas you know now in kaliyuga it is not something you know and that's why you know each yuga had their own sacrifice the primary sacrifice which we learn krateya adhyayato vishnu yeah 
so we have to understand when we see certain you know um, sentences when it comes to like this performing violence is allowed for vedas we have to also understand the context for it it's very important yeah so uh, and what does now krishna say you know uh, we have to see that Uh, what is Krishna's uh, opinion? Yeah. Now this is what Krishna says: Never give up acts of sacrifice, charity, and austerity. Yes, that's what Krishna is saying as well. So yagne dana tapa karma, nya tyajyam karyam evam evata. Yeah. Yagnyo danam tapas chayva pavanani manishina. Acts of sacrifice, charity, penance. Are not to be given; they must be performed. Indeed, sacrifice, charity, and penance purify even the great souls. Krishna is now. Krishna is giving his final say here that these three should not be given up. You know, these acts should be performed. Why? Because see, we have to understand these should be performed as far as they are elevating us to in our spiritual life. That's what Krishna is saying. We should do that. we learned in third chapter also krishna saying that all sacrifice should be performed for yagnapati yeah for vishnu's pleasure not for self if we are pleasing vishnu by performing sacrifices we will get happiness even in this world and next that's what was clearly said right and see penance when we talk about penance austerities like ekadashi getting up early in morning uh you know practically controlling senses by not eating anything other than prasad and what are these these are all penance right this is the penance in kalyuga itself because it's so difficult to control your senses with all things around it's not easy so that is penance so we should keep doing the sacrifice of yoga especially the chanting and the penances you know because why because they purify us again going back to third chapter and fifth chapter you know krishna mentioned perform your prescribed actions because pre- prescribed actions what you know um will they give by performing our prescribed actions you know um by sacrifice charity penance all these it will purify us it will purify our consciousness and once as a consciousness gets purified that knowledge awakens because it is getting clear so the knowledge awakens about spiritual yeah so it was a cycle there right so it's it's important that we should not have the thought process that okay i have uh, done my austerity now i have cleared all my sins so now you know no need to continue no it's like you know uh, a house say um you you have one of your windows open in a house yeah and the dirt keeps coming in right and as the dirt keeps comes in you keep cleaning your cleaning has to undergo otherwise the dirt will accumulate more right and as you are cleaning you have to also start thinking how should i restrict this dirt coming in like can i put a mesh can i close this and open something else where it so you have to think how can i reduce this incoming dirt same as with us devotees you know so you know we should keep cleaning by doing our sadhana without sadhana you know never be confident that i have done enough and i'll not be influenced by maya no that itself is we are in maya that we will be controlled no so we should keep continuing our sadhana because that's only thing which is cleaning us and purifying us right and that's what krishna is saying you know performing these activities sacrifice penances austerity why do we do ekadashi penance right why do we get up early in morning brahma mohur to chant right so all these are process to purify us gradually right but at the same time we should control our senses so that the dirt doesn't come in just because we are doing this doesn't mean the dirt we cannot get influenced by the people around us no so we have to try our best to keep that dirt you know not to come in okay so that's what krishna is saying here that you know even great souls he's saying you know 
uh, we have to try ourselves not to try our best not to expose ourselves where possible you know, where, where we know that there are certain that that consistent cleaning has to happen um so yeah so uh, and what should be uh, now when we are performing these activities what should be our mood to perform behind these sacrifice penance or charity you know um, that is explained you know what should, the mood should be is explained in the next verse yeah we'll go through that okay? so um the next verse talks about the mood to performing the actions okay? how should we have the mood what sh mood should we have we should perform it without attachment or doership mentality you know? that thought process that we are the only doer we should not have that, yeah without expectation of results that's what we learned as well tyaga and as a matter of duty right it is our duty right um and we will learn this that so far we have explained this now when arjuna asked about renunciation right um krishna explains now that even renunciation can be in three modes okay so this is um, very um, i think very interesting as well that how we will slowly see even in this chapter followed by 17th chapter that modes are actually influencing everything and it clarifies we we learned in the first six chapters in the middle six that modes influence us but now actually in the last six chapter it thoroughly gives us an understanding how and what extent modes influence us like that's why it is under the gyan yoga you know it gives a really very explained thesis of how you know information about how these three modes are so strong you know and nothing can be away from yeah so renunciation in three modes um maybe i can uh, ask one of you to uh, read this biswa prabhu ji can you read it Yes, uh, renunciation in three modes. Bhagavad Gita eighteen point seven prescribed duties should never be renounced. If one gives up his prescribed duties because of illusions, such as such renunciation is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Bhagavad Gita eighteen point eight. Anyone who gives up Prescribe duty as a troublesome or out of fear of bodily discomfort is said to have renounced in the mode of passion. Such actions never lead to the elevation elevation of renunciation. Bhagavad Gita eighteen point nine. Go Arjuna. When one performs his prescribed duty only because it ought to be done. and renounce all material associations and all attachment to the fruit his renunciation is said to be in the mode of goodness correct thank, thank you so here again you know renunciation in mode of goodness passion ignorance yeah it's explained so see um, let's take one i think it will then make sense with the other so 18.7 says prescribed duty should never be renounced right now there are certain set of people we come across that oh i have taken up bhakti you know i have to renounce everything you know uh, only this is the thing no you know bhakti never says that renounce every everything even your duties no you have to perform your prescribed duty you know but you have to channelize your prescribed duty such that you you are also you know you are having krishna consciousness in it right and somebody if they say that no uh, you know uh, and they give up their family they give up you know just because of that no that is in mode of ignorance you know prescribed duty should never be renounced that's what krishna is saying yeah and some renounce it because it's not comfortable it is not giving them giving them that luxury getting up early in morning is not easy you know it's uh, we all know that right so th there are certain class who don't want to do it because it is troublesome they feel you know uh, or out of fear quite a lot of them are very fearful as well you know because they have lot of attachment to the fruits of what they are doing you know so they they even in the mode of passion that's what krishna explains there was a um, uh you know as 
a thing which was raised when Prabhupada was around that um, Prabhupada was a sannyasi, right? And he was um, getting his devotees married. Yeah. And they raised the you know a question that you know he's a sannyasi, it's not his responsibility to get them married. But Prabhupada said that you know if there is any act you know where you can progress somebody's spiritual um, spiritual endeavor in you know, spiritual life, you know, then that is in that is more of goodness. It might fall outside your radar or something. You know? Uh, it might not be your prescribed duty, but if it is, if you, that act is enabling a spiritual advancement, then you know, it is not an ignorance, because he was called that it was an ignorance. Yeah. So we have to, when something is being renunciated, we have to really have a clear mindset. You know, if I'm able to perform my duties, renunciation should not be renunciation of karma, like we said. Not karma sannyas. It should be karma phala sannyas. Our renunciation, our mindset, our consciousness should be renunciation of results. Don't be attached to the results of that. That's that's what we learned in karma yoga section as well. Yeah. And then tenth shloka, um, yeah, Krishna says that the intelligent renouncer, situated in the mode of goodness, neither hateful of inauspicious work nor attached to auspicious work, has no doubt. No doubts about God. We learned this before, you know. The Krishna gives definition of who is an intelligent renouncer. One who is equipoised. That's what he's saying again. You know, because he is doing his work only for pressure of Krishna. There's not that self-centric that I want this, I me myself. It's not present. You know, and that's why, because they have full faith. They're doing it for Krishna. There is no doubt in mind. So overall from this section, we learned that uh, so far that tyaga means renunciation of, what is it? Renunciation of? Material things. Jyoti ji, uh, we are losing. Yes, sacrifice. It's very, very unclear. It's breaking up. Yeah, my internet is not uh, working properly today. Uh, what I'm saying here, Tyaga is like sacrifice. Sacrifice, if we sacrifice, we purify. Yeah, but it's like renunciation, right? That's what we learn. But renunciation of what I'm asking? Is it work or results of work? Results of action. Yes, it is work. No, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, we cannot run yes. for the, yeah. Yeah, we cannot run away, right? So it is performing work, but performing your prescribed duty, but um, renunciation of the results. Yeah. So that's, uh, so now we slept into Arjuna asking, um, again, all questions of Arjuna is, uh, for us, you know, and how Krishna roots uh, Bhagavad Gita. So Arjuna is asking, okay, so if one is not renounced, then what? So Krishna answers that also in 12th verse. For one who is not renounced, three fruits of threefold fruits of action, desirable, undesirable, and mixed, accrue after death. But those who are in the renounced order of life have no such results to suffer or enjoy. See, here Krishna is saying threefold fruits of action. Desirable. What is desirable? Say, achieving heavenly paths, heavenly life, upper, you know, elevated. Mixed is human life. And undesirable is hellish life. So what Krishna is doing, if someone is not renounced, they'll keep doing this bungee jumping, which we learned before. They'll keep going up or down, up or down, based on that or remain in the same planet based on their activities and what they desire, right? Because their, their desire is not gone for self, you know? So that bungee jumping will keep on going on. They will go either sometimes desirable life, sometimes undesirable, sometimes mixed after that, right? So that's what Krishna is saying, the reaction. 
But uh, if you're a devotee, then it kind of nullifies your reaction to that. Why? Because we learned the concept of that also, right? Akarma, karma, and vikarma. Akarma is doing all activities Krishna conscious focused, right? And uh, we learned that how if we keep increasing our akarma account, then our vikarma and karma will come back. Right? We learned that. So, an intelligent pronouncer is, he knows that he's not the doer. That's the thing. It's supreme God who is the doer. Yeah? And see, this doership mentality itself, why do we think we are the doer? You know, I did this work, so I have to bear the fruits. That's our mentality. I should get appreciated. Right? The doership mentality is never good. And we learned that um, cycle, I, uh, that the doership mentality makes us get feel the results, the ownership mentality. It results in ownership. I own the results only. I'm not going to share it, give credit to anybody else because I am the doer. Doership mentality results in ownership mentality. So that's why we have to be careful uh, with our understanding. So, yeah, so this is the uh, conclusion of this Karma Yoga uh, section, you know, until 12th chapter. Uh, that give up the results of work, not the work. If you don't give up, then you will keep doing the bungee jump. You know, that's what Krishna is. Now, the next part, um, are, you know, it's like a question might come to mind that, you know, okay, we give up the results oriented mentality, right? But how? How can we give up that result, of, you know, that, um, that mentality of doership? So Krishna now again explains again, you know, the first chip, six chapters which he covered, you know, the five factors of action. Showcasing us that we are not the only doer. So why should we be the only one who owns the result? You know. So Krishna explains that uh, in the next shloka, which is the 14th shloka. Right? So uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can you read this? Yeah, yes, Mataji. Adhisthanam tata katta karanam cha tata vidam vividas cha tata chetasta chetasta daivam chaiva tra panchamam the, play, the place of action, the performer, the various senses the many different kinds of endeavor and ultimately the supreme soul these are the five factors of action power gita 18.14 thank you, thank you so krishna now explains the five factors of action see we are not the only doer that's what he's showing us the mirror you know we have we have these five factors now we learned three before right um which was jiva, super soul, and the material. We have to understand here, he's saying place of action, which is the body, right? Kshetra, the performer, right? Kshetragnya, right? And, you know, and so body, again, it comes under material nature. So it's just that between jiva, super soul, and material nature, material nature is further, you know, explained by Krishna in three things, right? Senses are also material nature. So, instrument of action, our endeavor, our efforts are also material, right? So, in in next uh, slide, uh, we are coming back you know, uh, to the same what we learned before. Um, see, we have to understand when we are talking about these doers, if we take any example in our life, that, for example, to conduct this class, right? It's not that I am speaking, so I'm only I'm the only doer. No, right? For me to enable to things to happen, to conduct this, right? We need you know each of you. 
we need this system laptop we need the internet connectivity you know so there are various things we have to make sure to have in place we need electricity you know uh, we need the voice the speakers everything to work fine so there are so many factors which comes in right so along with jiva and super soul the material nature has you know all these factors are needed our efforts you know all these are needed right um, to happen so similarly krishna is saying so yes we learned this before if you remember this chart right material nature executes we went through this so that we have to how we can get rid of ownership and doership and ownership mentality krishna is clearly saying always keep reminding yourself that you are not the only doer that way you know our mindset will get tuned and will stop giving the uh, you know the ownership of the results only to us we'll start learning to give why do we give charity why is charity recommended it gives us the uh, to make it makes us learn the art of giving otherwise we all have that ownership mentality that we want everything with us you know in 12th chapter krishna says if you can't do this do this if you can't do this do this and in the end he says if you can't do anything at least serve others you know do charity you know to those organizations to old age homes or serve you know? so so that's why it is important for us to have this. now in next slide we we'll learn these five factor of action further you know 15 16 and 17 course so 15th verse five factors causes whatever right or wrong action a man performs by body mind or speech is caused by these five factors anything we do sometimes our free uh, speech we get really harsh you know with somebody which hurts others right it's the same us same speech but it is a wrong action and sometimes the same our same speech may may make somebody feel pleasure that's the right action right similarly from our body mind we can perform actions such that it can be sometimes right action and sometimes it can be wrong action right so now next is krishna says in 16th verse um that uh, you are unmuted pataji i mean muted please unmute can you hear me now yes yes okay sorry it was not allowing me to mute so um yeah in 16 poor krishna then says about doership mentality right so therefore one who thinks himself the only doer not considering the five factors is certainly not very intelligent and cannot see things as they are that's what krishna is and 17th verse talks about non doership one who is not motivated by false ego whose intelligence is not entangled though he kills men in this world does not kill nor is he bound by his actions now 17th verse what does it mean by though he kills means krishna is saying that uh arjuna's thought say arjuna's thought that he will incur sin by killing people on the battlefield you know he thought he will be sinful but that is not the case as he is acting as per krishna's order he is not taking that doership he doesn't have that doership he is doing that for krishna so though he is killing but still he is not incurring sin yeah so if we think ourselves as doer then we will get entangled and incursion by having that doership mentality and if we think uh, ourselves as a non doer as krishna's the doer that even if sometimes we have to perform such tasks which may externally look not right but it is as per you know the regulations then we will not incur the sin okay so 
with that uh, section, we'll now go to the second section, how modes control other things, okay? Now, can you uh, maybe tell me that, do you think something like knowledge, is that controlled by material nature, by the three modes? I'll bring up all, knowledge, work, doer, intelligence, determination. And we'll see ourselves, you know, sometimes we're so hardly determined to do something and sometimes it's in a kind of lower phase, right? So if we see actually Krishna says, yes, Krishna says, all these are also controlled by material by the three modes. That's what we learned in this chapter. And we will, what we have done is um, these five chapters, uh, factors like you can see from verse 20 to 22 Krishna is talking about knowledge in all three modes knowledge in mode of goodness knowledge in mode of passion knowledge in mode of good work similarly work doer intelligence and, determination. and we have tried to put this you know um, in say all the five factors mode of goodness to start with intelligence and similarly mode of passion and mode of ignorance. Okay. So now mode of goodness, right? Mode of goodness is like we know, you know, it is the best, right? <laughs> so compared to other two. So, so the goodness part of all these is like put together in one place. So Krishna states, one who says knowledge in mode of goodness, how do that person see? So they see, person in mode of goodness will see knowledge. You know, the knowledge is, is he soul in all the living entities? Okay. How do we have learned this? Vidya, Vinay, Sanman, Sampanne, Brahmane, Kavi, Hastini. It was fifth chapter, 18th verse. You know, they see soul in every living entity and super soul in every living entity. And that's how they, the person is in the world. Here, they see, so the soul is seen in all living entities. That's what the goodness person. Now, work, how it work? People in mode of goodness, the work, they have they are regulated, they are detached, detached to reserves, okay? No desire for fruits, that's what it is, right? They have a regulated lifestyle. And the, the doer, you know, the person is determined, enthusiastic, no false ego, unwavering, right? And the intelligence, you know, mode of goodness, intelligence, they know what needs to be done and what not to be done. You know, they know what is religion, what will be irreligion. They are very clear. What to be feared, what not to be feared. And they have a clear understanding that what is binding them and what is liberating. And determination, unbreakable, you know, sustained by yoga practice, controls mind, life senses. It's like it's not about, say, if we talk about first thing in morning, what we do, you know, um, chanting. It's not about, you know, uh, coming one day for chanting and missing the rest. No, they are really determined, like the sparrow story we are. You know, very determined. Um, so, and similarly, mode of passion, you know, we see that certain characteristics similarly that what Krishna says, you know, person in mode of passion, they have knowledge, you know, different living entities in different body. That's what they understand. On basis of body, you know, they differentiate. They will differentiate. Like this person is Asian, European, black, white. So, yes, the knowledge is there, but a very superficial. Work, they work for long hours, very great labor because they're passionate for results. They want to get the results back so that they can gratify their senses, self senses. And they are in a false ego as well. We know that. That's that's the major reason, right? For all that self centeredness. Their overall desire is sense gratification. And if that by doing something like by working for long hours, if that can be done, that's fine. So, so the doer is attached to results, greedy, envious. And desires to enjoy. That desire is to enjoy. Yeah. 
intelligence they cannot distinguish between religion and irreligion confused action to be done or not to be done and determination yes they will be if they do something of course because it is fruitive results is the key here in the mode of passion you know they do it with that you know in mind so economic development sense gratification and they are in association of similar right and similarly for ignorance krishna says that um knowledge yes people in ignorance they are attached to one kind of work all in all not knowing the truth very meager actually they are very lazy this class of people we learned right in modes as well that people in mode of ignorance they are lazy they are foolish okay? and work uh, yeah bondage by yamadutas because they are in ignorance destructive they are harmful to self and also to others you know uh, illusion they are under illusion disregard scriptures they don't follow scriptures towards um the person is they act against scriptures they act in their own way whimsical is they act in their own way if they think this is uh, you know right uh, and easy for me they just find that they don't want to know what is as per scriptures they have an a uh, tendency to cheat they are lazy morose procrastinate yeah. intelligence considers religion to be irreligion and irreligion to be religion and takes everything in opposite direction determination they cannot go beyond dreaming fearfulness lamentation illusion forests so 20 shloka 20 to 20 35 krishna sir explains all these factors in three modes okay i would also request you to go through the corpus um and test followed by this then the last uh, three shlokas you know um shloka number 36 to 39 um, um yeah he, krishna explains that even happiness is in three modes yeah so uh, jyoti mata ji can you or may uh, read this yes mata ji so happiness in three modes happiness uh start experience yeah. mm -hmm. end cause self realization goodness poison nectar dutifulness aware of it passion yeah, maybe i will nectar, explain poison yeah 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 sorry yeah maybe i'll i'll explain this bit and then we'll go later so just so that we oh. follow the table so happiness so we all i think everything we do is for this right this is the place um so people in goodness so the experience yeah initially when we start something if it is really difficult poisonous yeah and later in the end it's nectarian that is a mode of goodness for example let's say again the same example of chanting getting up early in morning initially it's really difficult i i i think we all agree it's like a poison thing right it's uh, it's so difficult and as you continue your journey you will see that eventually it's actually giving you that nectar so most of the spiritual activities you will see that when we start initially even fasting it's it's so difficult initially but later we realize yeah this is the real thing we need and people in mode of passion experience how is their experience when it starts it's all nectarian you know it's it's really you know they they get the results and they really and in due course we'll see in the end it turns to be a poison because that same thing starts hampering okay and then ignorance they start and end both is poisons you know it may be you know it's like any habit of even drinking smoking even initially it is the feel is poison and in the end also you know, the experience is poison what is the cause so <clears throat> it's our deep of you know the person in mode of goodness perform it as a part of duty as a prescribed duty right and then passion for self again sense gratification and ignorance it's laziness 
and self realization people in mode of goodness they are self realized they are we are aware as that i am soul you know there is a supreme you know uh, they are aware they are self realized but per, a person in ignorance they are not bothered they are blind for they think they are god so this is how krishna categorizes even happiness can be in three modes you know we may get happiness in doing different things but is it in mode of goodness passion or ignorance krishna is giving us very nice you know explanation as how we should understand when we are the four now then we come to the last verse for today uh which is the 40th verse yeah and maybe uh kavya mata ji can you read it Rama Prabha Mata Ji, do we have any? Yes, I guess so. Forty. Na ta dasti prithivyam va divi deveshu va punah shatvam prakruti jair muktam yat yepih shyat tribir gunai. There is no being ex existing either here or among the demigods in the higher planetary systems, which is freed from these three modes, born of material nature. Bhagavad Gita, eighteen point forty. Thank you. Again, in the end, Krishna. So I hope when we are going through this, you are able to feel how these concepts we learned before as well, right? Um, uh, so. Um, So yeah, so again, Krishna here summarizes that the total influence of all the three modes is all over the universe. You know, nobody can come come out of it. Everybody, even including the higher planets, demigods, are in the influence of three modes. Um, and we learned right in in fourteen chapter how can we come out of this three modes by surrendering to Krishna. That is the only way to. Come out of these things, influence of things. Yeah, so, um, and that's why you know this whole section today. It mainly again reminds us about the uh, parts of karma yoga, you know, um, and that we have to work towards karma phala sannyasa rather than karma sannyasa. Right, uh, you know, results of work should be given up, not the work itself. And again, then we highlighted, you know, um, you know that. that worship mentality should not be there um because when we have that worship mentality then we expect the results and that worship mentality can be taken away by really understanding that actually we are not the only cause you know there are five different causes together make something happen and that the worship mentality and post that we learned how these modes actually In seventeen chapter, we started learning how the sacrifice can be done in three modes. You know, food can be in three modes. Charity, austerity. In this chapter, we learn knowledge, work. You know, happiness also. Everything can be done in three modes. And with that, because three modes are the main focus. In the end, Krishna in forty eight shloka says, everybody is under the influence of. Three. even the demigods right this is how krishna concludes this uh, section um so with that uh, we complete today's session um